Hello, everyone. Kiora, welcome. We're in for another exciting webinar today. Just wait a minute or two, and we'll be getting underway very shortly. Thank you all for joining us today. We have a great session on um, practical tips for procurement leaders embarking on a digital transformation journey. So the specific topic is the true value of cross-functional um, digital transformation. So we have two great speakers from whom you'll be hearing from very shortly. Okay. We have nearly 150 people joining us today or registered for the webinar today, which is exciting given the, the fatigue I think we're all experiencing with webinars and also great effort everyone. Delighted to see that those sessions are of great value and we do get a lot of feedback from our community. So thank you for, for joining us today. I think we can, uh, we can get started. Okay, my name is uh, Giovanni Ferrante. I'm the marketing manager for SIPS in the Australia and New Zealand region, which encompasses the Pacific Islands as well. I'll be your host for today, but I will speak the least amount possible to give airtime to more knowledgeable people that you can see on screen. We are lucky enough today to have Ben Smith and Hendrik Snyman. Um, before we commence the, the session formally, I'd like to um, do a formal acknowledgement to the tradition custodians of the land from where I'm dialing in today, and that's the land of the Wurundjeri, we were wrong, and Burunong people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay my respect um, to elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people on the call with us today. Um, also extend my, uh, my respect and my thanks for our uh, Maori and Pacifica colleagues across in New Zealand and the Pacific Highlands. A few some keeping issues. As usual, the webinar is being recorded and you'll have an opportunity to relive the, the key moments um, in the next few days when we send you the, um, the link to view the recordings on our YouTube channel. Please do interact um, with our attendees and indeed our panelists through the chat functionality and make sure you do ask questions. We have a, an interesting um, recognition for the best questions today. There's a, a, a quick prize that will be given away and Ben will talk more about that. So please make sure you think of a good question and you submit it through the Q&A functionality on the Zoom tool. Um, I'd like to thank you, Krupa, once again for, for supporting this initiative. This is the, the fourth webinar of a very successful series that touched on uh, a number of points related to uh, digital transformation and how technology and particularly spread management tools can really drive uh, business value. So briefly to the topic of today, uh, we'll be talking about, again, the true cross-functional value of digital transformation. So how procurement as a function interact with um, other departments such as finance, IT um, and the supply chain area. So an essential collaboration that enables building uh, internal business case for um, what's effectively digital transformation strategy that can drive real business outcomes. So um, the most effective business case that you can build for spend management, um, they're not just looking at ROI, they combine um, effectively what we, what we call impressive hard dollar uh, impact uh, with other benefits such as ESG, uh, sustainability has never been higher on the agenda, but also innovation, agility, and uh, of course, risk mitigation. So um, as you can see on screen again, we um, will be joined today by Chief Procurement Officer of Bridge Energy, uh, Hendrik Snyman as well as uh, Cooper's Senior Director of Customer Value Management for ANZ, Ben Smith. And they will share their thoughts and insights on a journey on how contract and procurement uh, professionals can uh, thrive, leveraging uh, digital technology and spend management tool. And they will share their tips on what are the key ingredients for a successful um, digital transformation. So stay tuned, I'll be handing over to them very shortly. Uh, before I do that, I'll, I want to quickly um, tell you a little bit more about, um, about the speaker. So uh, Ben is 
an enterprise software executive with over two decades of managing and consulting experience across Australia, Europe, and the US. Uh, he's a senior director of uh, public company Cooper, and he's also a leader in the cloud business spend management software. So in his uh, current role, in his day-to-day job, Ben leads uh, Cooper's customer value management team uh, across ANZ region, and then includes managing over 70 customer across different sectors, markets, and industry of any size. Hendrik is a very familiar face to all of our SIPs friends. Uh, you've heard him speaking at uh, various events. He has been a judge in our awards last year. So thank you, Andrew, as well for joining us. Hendrik is currently the Chief Procurement Officer at Beach Energy. I understand he has been um, given also an additional uh, job title to do with transformation, and he'll probably tell you about that. And as part of his role, um, he, he's establishing a, a very functioning and performing procurement and contracting as well as logistic function um, in the business and driving sustainable saving and spend. So Hendrik has over 30 years of experience working uh, in both procurement as well as um, continuous improvement, um, leadership and contracting strategy. Um, today, Hendrik's impact at Beach Energy encompasses vast amount of cross-functional um, value for continued internal improvement. So. The breadth of the portfolio that he manages um, is CMP, aviation, marine logistics, inventory, FM, travel, and continuous improvement for the overall uh, beach energy organization. So quite a large area of influence. So without any further ado, I'd like to thank again Ben and Hendrik for joining us today. And I'm going to hand over to Ben now, who will be sharing some insights from Cooper. Thank you, Ben, and welcome to the session. Thanks a lot, Gio. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the, the time to join us today. I hope you're grabbing a, a bite to eat while you uh, listen to uh, uh, the, the team uh, today. I'm the Senior Director of Customer Value Management at Cooper across ANZ, I'm responsible for the success of our customers in, in the region. Uh, in fact, uh, just last week, a CFO of a Cooper customer referred to me as the value guy. Uh, so <laughs> I'm also happy to go by that, that title as well. Um, my team is laser focused on, on ensuring our customers are maximizing value with our solution and partnership. You know, we're having, now we're having conversations across many different functions at organizations, not just procurement teams. Now, when we talk about, about business spend management transformation, and the secret ingredient to positioning that for success and then executing on it is, of course, highly dependent on involving what we're referring to as, as a cross-functional team on that journey. Thanks, Gio. So just very quickly, uh, a little bit about Cooper for those uh, who don't uh, know us. We, you know, we have more than 2,000 customers globally in a hyper-growth phase across the world and obviously here in, in Asia, across the Asia-Pac region as well. Uh, now more than 2.3 trillion US dollars of spend under management through more than 7 million suppliers globally. And in fact, Gartner just yesterday released uh, their latest updated P2P or procure to pay magic quadrant. And, and we're all pleased to say that we remain the leader now for the sixth consecutive time that Gartner has released that, uh, that uh, magic quadrant. So you know, it's a very exciting time for Cooper. And all of our customers um, taking advantage of our innovation. We're all continuing to push the boundaries and everything from sourcing, procurement, through to payments, um, along with everything in between, you know, such as contract management, expenses, and, and more recently, growing to include third-party risk management, treasury management, and of course, uh, supply chain design and optimization. So, Jeff, if we could jump to the next slide, I, I do want to talk about that shift that we're witnessing in cross cross-functional collaboration as part of business BSM transformation. So you know, certainly in the past, we're all aware that you know, IT or procurement leaders um, typically took the charge of, of transformation in their space. But now that BSM transformation or business spend management transformation is, is uh, branching out to the, the many business functions that procurement adds great complementary value to and with, 
uh, we are seeing a, a more cross-functional team get involved in the early discussions, in the planning, in uh, the, the business case formulation. So you know, our observation is certainly the most successful at converting this, this strategy and planning into execution are the companies that involve executive leadership, finance, IT, treasury, ESG, and supply chain, and those complementary uh, business functions uh, in the early conversation. Of course, as the, as the economy recovers, leaders, business leaders have an opportunity to eliminate the silos that were sometimes painfully obvious over the past year or two. I think you know, the need for digital transformation continues to accelerate as a result of the pandemic. Uh, as business leaders realize the challenges that, that result from a lack of digital readiness or siloed processes and tools. Procter and Gamble, PNG, a, a multinational consumer goods corporation and, and a proud Cooper customer, you know, relies upon rapid product innovation to stay ahead of evolving consumer trends. Their CPO was, was recently quoted just last week as saying you know, the, the name of the game now is all about resiliency and agility. Thank you, Gio. So not only are we seeing a shift, next slide, yeah, thank you. Not only are we seeing a shift in, in the ownership of this transformation and the involvement of the, the key business functions in, in um, bringing about the need for and then executing on this transformation. We're also seeing um, how the value proposition has evolved, taking into account these key business functions. And certainly the, the shift has gone from a primary focus on, on cost and margin impact to the entire value creation business-wide. Many of the value drivers in this updated framework that you can see on the screen, um, available in a, in a report that is soon to be published. I believe that everyone will get, will get a copy of this report um, after this session. Many of these drivers are not necessarily new. However, I think it's the combination of the, the priority and the visibility of certain drivers that has started a bit of a different conversation. So value is, is of course, not just looking at the bottom line, but uh, some of the priorities obviously now include agility, innovation, ESG, and of course, risk mitigation. So, so now let's now take a deeper look into some of these priorities. Thanks, Dio. So with this updated definition of, of value, you know, this updated definition of value is what is driving the need for a truly cross-functional approach to business spend management transformation. And I've, I've got a couple of, of the key, um, key uh, stakeholders represented on this slide. This is by no means an exhaustive list. Um, and of course, first and foremost, we should not um, ignore the business, our colleagues, you know, and organizations, people should be you know, at the heart of everything we do. Um, and that you could extend that from employees and, and customers to suppliers, of course, as well in this space. You know, people these days have a very high user experience expectation. They use the likes of Amazon and eBay at home, and they expect to be able to walk up to a system and, and use it, with it without training or with very little training uh, at work. So adoption is key. When we talk about value realization, adoption is key to maximizing, maximizing this. So let's now touch on a few of the, the persona, personas listed on uh, on this slide and how the, and their interpretation of, of value um, as part of a uh, BSM transformation. If we think about the CFO or a finance team, they may be aware that, that business spend management transformation has the potential to deliver significant savings, improve profitability and, and free up cash needed in other parts of the business. Yet what we're seeing at many organizations is uh, what we'd call so-called soft benefits, better risk and compliance management, innovation and agility may, may be even more compelling. My team is seeing across our, across our customers, the CFO and treasury collaborating with procurement to optimize working capital, have um, budgets be more proactively managed. And I think it's those, those CFOs that 
who clearly understand how a business spend management initiative can maximise the shareholder value in these ways is on top of, of course, the, the traditional return on investment are most likely the CFOs that will provide their full support. If we think about ESG leaders and sustainability leaders, business spend transformation can, can now not only support the need to report on, their, on the compliance of a, of a business, but can now joined at the hip with procurement leaders directly influence spend. For example, we're, we're partnering with, with many CPOs and their um, ESG um, peers at their businesses on how to execute on this across their supply base and define what is required to achieve um, the uplift and the targets that are now very visible and appear frequently in, uh, in annual reports, for example. And then the, there's the uh, IT or technology um, CIO, CTO persona. Many CIOs you know, traditionally have had a strong preference for software from their ERP providers due to the long relationships and maybe the, the one throat to choke preference. But certainly uh, while CIOs might, may raise concerns about deviating from their ERP providers that might, may lead to challenges, you know, the, the truth that's played out now for, for quite a long time with the emergence of cloud technology is that, is that modern cloud native uh, BSM systems can actually offer significantly reduced total cost of ownership. In addition, of course, to the vastly improved value realization that comes with the, the user experience and the adoption I just mentioned uh, earlier. So you know, the key to success here in, is alignment and involvement of all key transformation stakeholders. You know, that's really, really the secret source that we're seeing play out um, you know, this very day. Um, please, thanks, Gio, please do reach out to me at ben.smith at cooper.com if you'd like to have a chat uh, with the value guy um, and you've got any questions about business spend management transformation, Cooper, I'd, I'd certainly love to connect with you. Um, I now, of course, have the pleasure of introducing Hendrik Simon, CPO, and more recently, as Gio mentioned, the Head of Continuous Improvement at Beach Energy. Hendrik, it's, it's great to see you. I think the last time we spoke uh, together in a forum like this was, uh, was at the Cooper APJ Symposium back in, uh, in 2019 uh, here in Sydney. Um, all yeah, there was in person, in person those days. And you know, I think things have changed a lot since then. Uh, we, we would have never forecast uh, you know, what, what's happened in the last few years to have happened, obviously COVID and the lockdowns here in Australia and, and New Zealand and around, the, around the Asia. Um, a container ship breakdown in the Suez Canal causing um, global supply chain problems. You know, and, and of course, uh, emerging themes of third party risk management and ESG has really been the front of mind of, of leaders like yourself. You've been busy since then with transforming a, your, you know, your team into a world leading oil and gas um, contracts and procurement team. So uh, you know, without further ado, over to yourself to share your insights on the changing role of CMP at, at Beach Energy and the ingredients required to, uh, to flourish in this constantly changing environment. Thanks a lot, Hendrik. Thanks, Ben. Uh, thank you for the um, introduction by the UNG. Much appreciated. I, I want to share with the team today uh, a bit of the shift that, that, happened in, that happened in contracting and procurement and what do we need to do to, to address that shift? Um, and I know this, this session is, is um, named as a digital transformation session, but I believe there's a, there's a few things that need to fire together in order to really make sure we can accommodate this shift that has happened. So I want to share with you, and I specifically call this not a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift, in my view, is I can go back to my old paradigm. This shift for me has been so phenomenal that I call it a seismic shift. And that is the, the, the role that has changed forever, in my view, for contracting and procurement. It's that, that shift 
from cost out to, to value in. In the olden days, the, the CPO was just shaking out the market for the last dollar and penny. And now it's all about how we can create value for the organization. That, that purchaser to the influencer, how can we influence the business to make the right decisions? Um, in the past, the business wanted to avoid all risk. And now it's about that net acknowledgement that you, you cannot wish away all the risk. And it's really balancing that risk for the business. Um, Contracts and procurement were always seen as a, as a constraint. Oh, those contract and procurement folk, they're just slowing down the process. And, and that has shifted to what, what gaps can be opened. And I'm not talking here about one standard deviation. I'm talking here about two, making the organization uncomfortable and stretching the organization towards executing in a different way. I spoke a little bit about being a third party squeezer, shaking it out the last penny. It is now about really establishing the strategic relationships with our suppliers and really unlocking the value that is locked up in the interface, as I call it, the interface between the owner and the supplier, but also adopting new technologies and different ways of working from our suppliers where they are operating in different industries, what we, are, what we do. And then <clears throat> the phenomenal change that we're seeing on sustainability now. Um, we're in the oil and gas industry, all absolutely laser-like focus about the shift towards sustainability. And for me to address the seismic shift and not going back to your old paradigm, I believe there is a really free ingredients that contracts and procurement need to do. And I want to discuss that with you. The, the first ingredient for me is being, being integrated with the business. So what do I mean by being integrated with the business? In, in layman's terms, if my wife sends me every night or every Sunday evening to 7-Eleven to go buy a milk and bread because we didn't plan well, I cannot do procurement well in negotiation 10 o'clock at the Sunday evening. And that's what I mean by getting integrated with the business. Be at the table early when there's still some value left. And one, ask yourself, how do you, how do you achieve being there early? And it's all about, for me, about those four ingredients that you see right in front of you. And that is having credibility with the business. So that is building that credibility around every corner and opportunity you have with the business. The second one is that attractiveness of value. They, they, they need to approach contracting and procurement in the first instance because there's value, not because the process or the governance documents indicate they need to engage contracts and procurement. I also believe we in contracts and procurement have a, a huge opportunity to understand the business better than what a business understand it themselves. Then you really become integrated with the business and you, you get that credibility. And then the last one is being a trusted advisor to the business where you advise them and, and they, can, they can just feel that trust that comes through that what we are proposing in a contracting procurement profession makes sense to them. And if, you, if you've got those four aspects, I really believe in, the, in being integrated with the, with the business as the first ingredient to address the seismic shift is there. The second, the second aspect that, that we need to, to address is, is really embrace, embracing technology to deliver value. Um, and for me, it's, not, it's, it's about, the, you need to have a very good system, but your, your processes and, 
and systems and analytics just need to be superior. And that is just a given. So these e procurement solutions just need to be utilized well. And the business wants to go to a single system to say, how do I do this? How do I do that? I go to this system. Or in our instance, let me access the Coupa system because that is where I'm, 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 I'm getting the help that I need. I also believe we need to really leverage the technology for delivering cost transparency and end-to-end -end visibility. I think we all know about the current constraints in the market about um, the shortage of containers and the cost associated with that. And this is a typical example for me how we as contracts and procurement need to deliver end-to-end -end visibility for our end clients really to similar than the, the, the eBay, Amazon experience that you get, you can see exactly where your products are. The third, third aspects in terms of technology is we just need to make it easy for the business to buy. Um, if you can just go back one slide, please. Is we just need to make it easy for the business to buy. Um, making it complicated for them is just no longer acceptable. And then looking at all new and emerging technologies, robotic process automation, all those things is just a given nowadays. And then I think we're all familiar with the explosion in data digitization and analytics. That is, we just need to do it in order to address the seismic shift. And lastly, the third ingredient that I would like to talk about is, 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 is really people capability. Because of the shift that happened, we no longer in the context of procurement profession can do business as we did in the past. And the capability of people is becoming so accented that we really, really need to address this. So um, what, what I am personally looking for in, in people, I call it the five C's. Is, is creativity. The second one is critical thinking. The third one is collaboration. Fourth one is communication. And the fifth one is comprehension of complex problems. So the capability that I'm looking for, you've not heard anything about contracting procurement there. It is about a different kind of skill set that we require to, to really get people in the contracts and procurement profession to address the, the new way of working. And I spoke to business understanding versus procurement understanding, really need to have that skill set to, to understand the business, the technical, the technology part, what is the value drivers in the business. And the, the last two points is, is a bit linked to each other and it's about talent management. How do we, how do I leverage the best talent in contracts and procurement is, is by really start opening up the contracts and procurement stable for, for our technical folk or commercial folk to really come into contracts and procurement and come and help us deliver. Um, if they display those five C capabilities and the contracts and procurement capabilities, we can teach them on the way. And the, the last point is really about the economies of skill. What I mean by that is not, not everyone in the profession is suited all the time for the best solution. So we as leaders in, in the profession really need to make sure we apply the right skill towards the the sourcing activity or the, the category activity that is in front of us. So just making sure we, we're not getting anchored by, by uh, uh, the lines on an on a, on a org chart, but really looking at the skill people possess and apply them for those different challenges that is ahead of us. So I've shared with you the six um, seismic shifts that happen. And I've shared with you also the three ingredients in terms of 
people capability, technology, and being integrated with the business. And I believe if we really press the accelerator on those three ingredients that we as a contracts and procurement profession can address seismic shifts and, and make sure we don't go extinct like the dinosaurs, but thrive in the new world where we and that's that's my presentation for you today. So um, welcome to ask questions. Thanks, Hendrik, for those uh, insight that insightful update. You know, a lot of great nuggets um, shared there. Um, your three key ingredients, and I hope everyone took note of the uh, five C's of, of people capability that uh, Hendrik uh, rolled off. I'd, I'd love to kick things off, Hendrik, with a question. Um, on, on cross-functional alignment. I think and you've been on your, your beach journey now for a few years and um, you've, you've achieved uh, quite a lot in that time, I, I know. And maybe if you could share um, with the audience you know, the, the tricks of the trade that you've adopted uh, to get your fellow executives and business partners aligned to drive that, that, that this cross-functional value at, at, at Beach Energy. Yeah, I mean... You, you, you call it tricks, I, I call it common sense. Um, for me, it is really having that, that four aspects I, I mentioned under um, being integrated with the business. If you display that credibility, that attractiveness of value, that business understanding and be a trusted advisor, one have, one's road is easy to to engage with those alongside you around the exec table. Um, you, your discussion that you can have with them is it becomes very different. Let me let me try to explain it in a, in a, in a bit of a personal way. Put yourself in their shoes. In, put yourself in the, the shoes of the CFO. How will they look at me as the, the chief procurement officer, when are they going to engage with me? When will they engage with me? Will they engage with me if there's no value? Or, or if they know there is value in engaging with this person and and and, and being able to, to deliver that 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 being a trusted advisor and 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 Understanding the business really well makes the discussions very, very different. And it really comes natural. Um, and then one need to also realize that, that no man is an island. So what I mean by that is in businesses, we, we look a lot at, uh, we think value gets delivered by the function or by the asset, but that's not a case anymore. Um, value gets delivered vertically across everyone. So I'm trying to say here that just engaging with, with the other parts of the business is just a given today if you want to drive value. And driving that recognition in the business that value gets delivered vertically and not horizontally makes that a fairly easy discussion in my view. I hope that answers yeah. the question. Ben. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I love it. I think uh, you're certainly speaking my language uh, on value. <laughs> um, maybe now let's let's. Um, ben, but the, oh, wait, here, sorry here. for interrupting. Ben, sorry for interrupting you. So, yeah, that's an interesting thing for me about what I've seen in Cooper. Is that I'm I'm always amazed when I engage with Cooper. Is that your guys are so delivered on what value the system drives for us. Why, why is that a case? You, you've got no interest in, in, in the value I deliver. Can you explain that to me? I'll try, I'll try. It's a great question, Hendrik. Look, I think, I think, I think, I think maybe, maybe the more important question, Hendrik, is, is why wouldn't we focus on delivering real value to our customers? You know, I think, um, you know, ultimately, you know, if, if we're aligned as a, as a business, as a partner um, with, with you, with all of our customers, you know, on the def first of all, the definition of what value is, because it does differ 
you know, quite, quite remarkably, whether it's by industry or even business, the size of the business, the stage that a business is at. Um, you know, I think if we're aligned on that definition of value um, and that you know, when, we, when we have a, get a new customer that, that you know, decides to partner with Cooper, you know, that we, that we, um, we create a clear value roadmap and we, we align on what that journey looks like and we, we support you know, our, all of our customers on executing against that, that, that roadmap. We're supporting, then we're supporting your organization execute on you know, your strategic, strategic objectives, not just as a procurement function, but hopefully as a business um, you know, and gain that competitive advantage in the market that, that you're in. So, you know, the innovations that, that you know, cloud native technology provides everyone in the world now, not just business, but the public, you know, it's moving at such a pace that, you know, do nothing at your peril is, is a phrase we're hearing. We're hearing a lot. You just you just uh, mentioned it. So I think you know that's why it's, it's because uh, we're keen we're keen for everyone to be successful and and not perish <laughs> as the alternative. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's let's uh, have maybe one more question um, and then we'll open up to the audience. Um, can you share some of the the challenges you've experienced along the way in? in you know, getting stakeholders aligned from other parts of the business. Um, you know, what worked, what did you do that worked in getting alignment and getting people together? What didn't work and, and some of those lessons learned really keen, keen for you to tell us a little bit about that, that, that journey. Thanks. Yeah, that's an interesting question. When, uh, there's lots of things that don't work. I can tell you that, but let me, let me, I, for me, this, uh, this, two things that stand out that doesn't work. And the first one that doesn't work is when contracts and procurement absorbs value. When your client doesn't see that you're, you're driving value, you're driving compliance and governance. That is the, one of the first aspects that just divorce you completely from your internal clients. The flip side of that, what works is when you ooze value. So an aspect that's really of concern to me is that the capability gap is bigger than what I thought. And I see in a lot of instances, one assume the capability is there and it's just not there. And, and clients, unfortunately, your internal clients and stakeholders, unfortunately, is He's, he's not receiving what I expected. Um, the third thing that I would like to mention that is, that is not working is that the principle of what is important to us as contracts and procurement is not always important to them. It, one should really put yourself in the shoes of the, the internal client internal stakeholder and say what is really important to them and then what is important to us should just happens as a business as usual in the background I think it starts falling apart a bit when the important to contracts and procurement is 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 our becoming a high priority and that's a challenge um, also and, and you've touched partly on it Ben was demonstrating that deep resilience, specifically in this changing market where we are, that really helps to building um, value and credibility towards contracts and procurement. Thanks. Thanks again, Hendrik. That was very enlightening for all of us. Um, I'd now, now like to get to some of the questions asked by the audience. To keep things interesting, um, you know, we are uh, awarding prizes. So uh, bear with me. I hope you can see this on the on the screen here, there we go, this way, this way up. We've got uh, our CEO's book, uh, Value as a Service, uh, one copy and a, and a couple of pairs of highly sought after Cooper socks that I know all of my colleagues would love to get their hands on. <laughs> so, uh, so Gio, you know, um, you know, Gio will be looking out in the Q&A box 
Um, please, you can use the vote, little vote thumbs up button in that Q&A box to vote for the what you think is the, uh, the most popular or interesting, challenging question. Um, and of course, please uh, ask ask questions yourself as well. So, uh, Theo, maybe over to you to facilitate the Yeah, very the good. Thanks, ben. Thanks, thanks for um, making the prizes available. Um, quite interesting. Um, I would just start by putting an encouragement out there to ask questions. I'll, I'll quote one of my first mentors saying, every question that you don't ask is the learning opportunity that you're missing. So you've got two amazing uh, speakers and you can pick their brain. So send the questions through, please use the Q&A function, uh, not the chat, so that people can vote. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, Sarah's question, who's jumped on the top of the ladder. So he mentioned that sometimes there's a lot of resistance from what he calls internal customers of getting human involved. And you both touched on the importance of procurement to be seen and become more of a business partner more of a business enabler as opposed to be seen as the, the police, as, as you know, many, many people refer to. So how do we address that? How do we change the perception of procurement from police to, to the partner? Um, Hendrik, I might start with you because you, you've, you've done lots of those uh, transformative um, engagement within, within your organization. What was the key of getting this implemented? Yeah, it's Geo for me. Um, it's a really about becoming that trusted advisor and start building that credibility with the business, and and that's not that's not something that you you build overnight. It it comes with time. So it's not seven o'clock in the morning, Monday morning. We've got trust, we're a trusted advisor and we've got credibility. So the. The chief procurement officer also need to have that confidence in his team <clears throat> that they will be able to deliver for the business and then go and challenge the business to say, the way you engage in contracts and procurement is just not right. Engage this capability in the team and, and I will make sure they deliver for you. And that's the way you start building back that credibility. Um, but just sitting in your in your home office or in your open desk plan or in your office and waiting for the business to engage you is just no longer acceptable. And then don't underestimate the importance of starting to know the business better than what a business knows of themselves. Very wise. That would be that would be my my comments towards that, Jim. Thanks, Andrew. Hendrik. Maybe I, can I yeah, quickly add to that? You know, it's, yeah. it's spot on. I think, I think, um, you know, using BSM technology to get the foundation right, to get the you know the very basic procurement processes humming at an organisation. That then, once you've established that as 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 step one on a, on a transformative journey, that then opens up you know, the capacity and capability of your team to have those engaging discussions with the business, you know, and it's not just about, you know, can you approve this rec or where's the, where's the invoice or why haven't we paid the supplier? It's it, the, the, no doubt the conversations that Hendrik's team are having with, it, with the business are entirely different to a couple of years ago where, where and we're seeing that across, across, across the region where, where um, we're now partnering with the, you know, the ESG, leader of the business and you know, say, hey, we, we, can, we can help you. You know, the, the, the commitments that are now getting published in, in companies' annual reports, public companies' annual reports, they've, they've really evolved in the last, in, in, even just the last year to being, you know, back in the day, not very substantive, right? Not very, very qualitative statements. They're now quantitative. They're, they've got specific numbers and targets in them. and and you know, the procurement teams can actually help achieve it, you know, uplift in, in many of these targets that, that you know, the ESG peers are talk, talking about. And, the, you know, the same applies to a conversation with the treasurer about optimising working capital. The same applies to the leader of risk in a, in a business. How can we manage, how can we get visibility and hold of, of, of risk in our supply chain and, and get, and then proactively monitor and address it 
rather than rather than it being an after the fact discussion. Um, but you know, putting yourself in your, in your in your business stakeholders' shoes and understanding you know, their definition of value and 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 um, you know, bringing along that that journey is some of the things that Hendrik also said that are, that are important. Absolutely. And if I may add, just quoting what you guys were talking about before, you know, being interested in, you know, what is the value that you're adding to that particular business unit? You know, don't do a single point um, sort of support and then, you know, leave the business unit to deal with the outcomes. Be interested in the value that you actually create for that particular business unit or function that you engage with. And then follow up to see how you can do it differently next time. That goes hand in hand with requiring, you know, development of uh, what we call soft skills, even though there is nothing soft about that, which you know seems to be on top of the list of um, any professions, uh, you know, hierarchy of uh, you know, capabilities needed. So it's no different for procurement. Um, great to see there's a lot of questions coming. So we get to uh, a question from SK Chan. So what is the realistic time span needed um, if the top management gives you the, the go ahead to see the results that, that you've promised. I guess that refers to the wheel, the stakeholder that, that you shared, Ben. So you do you wanna have a crack at that first? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Gio. And thanks, uh, SK Chan. So, you know, it's an excellent question. I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a journey. Um, it, there should be, um, once you go through a transformative um, um, program, uh, I can talk to Cooper's examples uh, over the last year and a half during COVID. Well, a lot of uh, our new customers have, have we've, you know, delivered entirely virtual uh, implementations. The average go live has been four four months, and uh, you know, so the time to value is is getting shorter and shorter with the advancement in technology and innovation. I think, um, you know, and from there, I talked about. Um, aligning on the definition of value, on um, establishing clear time-based targets that um, you can both work towards, um, and then hopefully executing on those on those targets through you know, what we call a value roadmap, a clear plan of activity um, to execute on, and then reset and can uh, apply that that um, continuous in improvement mindset that I think is very interesting. Hendrik's role has, has been expanded to that. I think that's a, an incredibly, um, you know, it's a, an incredible of the business to acknowledge that continuous improvement and, procure, and procurement are so tightly aligned. Um, and of course, Hendrik's the capable leader to, to drive that at the business. Um, the other thing I would add with, with, the, with the emergence of tech, this, the technology, the, the technology is now doing a lot of the hard work for you. We talked about getting that foundation yeah. right. You've got a finite, a procurement, Hendrik has a, a, you know, a team of, you know, finite, they're, they're a great team, I know, fi but there's finite resource and, and finite capacity to do things. And so how does Hendrik um, determine what should that team focus on? Well, the, the technology is now, you know, doing a lot of the hard work for him or a lot of the analytics and AI being applied to, to you know, features actual um, spend data and is surfacing up for, for Hendrik and the team a prioritised set of ideas on how to, how to get more value, um, whether, it's, whether it's process efficiency, value realisation, sustainability. Um, a lot of these things are being now uh, you know, surfaced up and it's just a matter of, of Hendrik and the team working out, like, okay, well, we... We focus our finite resource here and here and here to deliver the most value for, for the organization. I'll stop there. Okay, on Henrik, you got anything to add? No, I think you've explored it well, Ben. Brilliant. Thanks, Ben. Um, Henrik, we've got one from you from um, for you from Bram. Um, he's saying we spend we, you, you've talked a lot about partnering with suppliers, which seems to be like a common element across um, all the effects of, you know, transformation journeys. Um, however, he's saying often we underestimate the time and effort that's required to, um, you know, building and managing effectively the, the supplier relationship. So in said that, do you have examples on how effective um, SRM approaches have, uh, have delivered great value for Beach Energy? Uh, thanks for that question, Brown. Yeah, 
a really interesting question, and I fully align with with Brahms' take that supplier relationship management is not something that you you just do before breakfast in the morning. You you really need to to make sure you you give it the adequate priority and time that it deserves, and and that needs to get driven by what value is there for you. So let me let me illustrate that by by two examples. The first one is we, we've got a supplier in Beach that renders a, a range of services, um, but we've got other suppliers that renders some of the same services, but not all. And, and we've embarked on a journey with this one supplier and said, there must be value in this relationship. And we've started working together Put up a project charter for ourselves what is our behavior is going to be and such for and there's executive sponsorship towards that behavior and what we've now seen now that we procure all the services from that same supplier where we in the past had a say for instance a breakdown in one part of the services and got caught up in the interface that we pay standing time for all the other services we have now embarked on a journey to say, if this service of you is not delivering as it should or not delivering on time, I am not paying for the other services that's waiting on that service. So that's a typical example of, of how we are driving value. And, and I'm talking waiting time here of millions of dollars that has been eliminated. Um, I've also had approaches from from suppliers where I, I never thought I'll engage with them. I was, I was engaged in the oil and gas industry by a supplier for swimming pool cleaning equipment. And I thought, now this is gonna be a short discussion. And we had a discussion and this supplier really listened to our problems, what, what is our challenges, so let me, we, we had a vessel that had to disconnect from its production station, sail back to Singapore to the dry dock to be clean, the hull need to be clean for, for it to be able to sail away from cyclones if, if, if there's cyclones coming past. And this supplier came with his knowledge of sw swimming pool cleaning equipment. He designed a solution for us that cleans the vessel in situ. So we never had 40 days of lost production plus the cost of the dry dock and the risk of connecting and disconnecting. And this piece of equipment was just cleaning our vessel as a pool in situ. And I've also had engagements from, from companies that delivered some facilities in the Afghan war that we could apply in, in the oil and gas industry that eliminated millions of dollars for us so yeah you, if, with your existing suppliers you need to have that relationship and pay the time towards that but also open your aperture towards suppliers that works in different industries they bring different kind of technologies that you will never expect i hope that answers the question bro it does with a very interesting example as well i so thought that um swimming pool cleaning suppliers could actually help uh, clean vessel in transition. So that's a really great example. Um, we've got another question from, uh, from Jody, um, but that's an interesting one from my perspective. I love both of your uh, feedback on this one. She says, like, I find that when bringing um, in change, some of the stakeholders um, are reluctant as they might feel uncomfortable losing, losing control this nervousness around, um, you know, the systems that they're not familiar with, particular, you know, if you're changing from a, a silo mentality where each area of the business has, you know, control over their own uh, processes to a more collective approach where collaboration is required. Any tips on how do you engage with group? How do you make effectively people collaborate? How do you get, you know, the buy-in? How do you get the, the commitment to make the change process work? Who wants to go first? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. I think, thanks, Joe. That's a great question as well, Jody. Um, you know, we, we can't ignore the people aspects. And Andrew talked about the importance of uh, people and teams. Um, so um, you use the word, uh, any tips to engage these groups? Well, first of all, engage groups <laughs> is the first tip. I think, you know, um, pe bringing people along the journey um, is very important. Um, making sure that what you put in front of them is easier to do what they need to do than it is now. Otherwise, they will just revert back to the old process. So that's obviously you know, of utmost importance is the user experience. I talked about Amazon and, and eBay is something that they're used, people are used to at home and it, it needs to be as easy um, in the workplace. And uh, we, we've also talked about putting, putting yourselves in um, others' shoes today. It's, it's important to, um, to understand their definition of value. Maybe it's, you know, I'm busy at my day job all day. I don't want to be spending too much time buying what I need to buy. And so, you know, the concept, I know this is, this is um, you know, very, very common in both Brahm and, and Hendrick's industry is the concept of tool time, increasing tool time by, make, by reducing the amount of administration required. You know, that's something, something else I would like to add there. But Hendrick, uh, over to you to uh, add, add, add some wisdom. Yeah, Ben, in addition, I would say is one really needs to, to do change management as part of your project rollout today. So it's, change management is not something that you do nowadays as an add-on to your project. It is just part and parcel of it. So, it, you, and, and, and you relate to it, you need to bring people on the journey, but it, the, the change management part need to be seamless. They don't need to experience it as a, as a or the, the, here comes the pleasing crowd past and after the project to come and convince me. No, the convincing should take out throughout. Then don't underestimate the technology that we can apply. If, if I look at, at what we currently doing in Cooper, one of the things that, that people does really despise is trying to look up cost codes that is associated with the purchase order but we are looking at currently at artificial intelligence in populating that cost codes for them automatically and that can correct it even a little bit later. So those is the kind of things that we really deploy. And my last comment will be, if they use a new system or a new process, assure them the sky is not gonna fall in because it doesn't. If it, if it doesn't work, it's okay. So take that as a as a real learning on board for for all of us and don't don't use that that failure as our oh, the CMP governance process is not being followed um, really adopting that 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 learning attitude in organization yeah thank you I thought that was really valuable insight um, I'll add my quick one there needs to be a perception that the output of the collective is greater than the output of the individual, either person or business unit. And when collaborating, so I was talking to Chess before we, we went live, you know, we're going through like a massive digital transformation. And we realized that we can find a lot more synergies and come up with much better ideas when we do exercises of, you know, testing and stuff, for example, as a group as opposed to individuals. So I know we all run out of time, but there's, a, there's another question that I'm really hoping for to address. So if you can get like maybe 30 seconds from both of you guys, because that, that's a really interesting one from Benson. How do you balance, and again, 30 second each, how do you balance the need for governance with the willingness to become more agile and innovative? Is there a trade-off? Has to be a trade-off. Andrew, can I go with you first? Yeah, so you, you absolutely need to have the governance because uh, we, we're spending shareholder money. Uh, so you need to have that governance in place. Um, but there, again, it's that learning organization, but you should have the artificial intelligence and your reporting to make sure you address governance missteps in a, in a good fashion afterwards, where you really then have the opportunity to engage with the business and say, 
here the governance process was not followed, approach it as a learning opportunity and not as a policing opportunity. And one will be surprised how the business, if, if they can understand the governance, why it is in place, they follow it. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. and add, adding, adding to that, Henrik, um, you know, again, you know, business spend management transformation brings in control and visibility and, and governance into an organization spend. Use the opportunity of transformation of that of the activity to not just replicate what you, what is currently happening within the business. Use it as an opportunity to to um, you know, adopt a best practice process to streamline things whilst whilst retaining you know the required level of of, of governance from a process perspective. Use it as an opportunity to you know shift things up a bit um, whilst that whilst that change is occurring is is, is the perfect time to do it and making sure you bringing everyone along the journey at the same time. Good yeah, and I'm going to take the liberty to adopt a quote that Andrew used in his slides about, you know, um, the tools that you use. So governance is not different. Don't take governance as an excuse, uh, you know, not to be innovative or agile. Sharpen the governance to make it fit uh, without compromising the standards. So, guys, thank you so much. It's been such an insightful and um, and thorough discussion, lots of valuable insight. Really appreciate you coming on board and uh, uh, sharing your knowledge um, and your expertise with our audience. Um, I'd like to thank you both very much. And again, Cooper, for supporting this initiative. It's been a great session and wish you both an enjoyable rest of the week and thank all of the attendees for, for continuing to support our webinars. Great discussion, lots of questions. We have the winner of the, uh, the prize, Saurabh. So, Send your contact details. Ben's reminding you of what you won, the book and the socks. Congratulations to you. And thanks again, Hendrik and Ben, for this awesome session. It's been a pleasure to, um, to be with you guys today. Thanks, everyone. Take care until the next session. Good day, everyone.